guys, it is that Panda guy. I'm here again with another video, and today I am hoping that I will not flop my face and I can do a little pump by beginner's guide you know just go over the basics and hopefully this does help some either noobs or even just some people who don't know what they're doing and maybe even some older players who just want to know some of the basics and this video might just help their head a little bit i don't know but let's hop into it so first off i will start with explaining what pompeii is it is a one hour event that you have every two weeks and at no expense of yourself you can fight in it meaning that for example even if you have a ton of injuries in there those will all be recovered right after and you will just get rewards for fighting so as long as you do try to fight and stuff you will get rewards for basically nothing except for an hour of your time and i guess this is a pretty fun event so overall this is probably one of the better events in the game if not the best event in the game um, kind of give and take type of event you know um, it's a 30 v 30 and of course this is up to your leadership of course if they actually want to register 30 people um, and also you can register up to 40 people but there are 10 uh, like slots that you have to fill or you don't have to fill these slots but there are 10 extra slots that you can fill and these 10 slots will be reserves so if some of those 30 players don't show up within I guess I think it is the 10 minutes of you entering Pompeii, then those reserve players can actually fill their slots. So that is a little explanation. So 30v30 at the maximum, and yeah. Um, the winners are rewarded depending on how much you, like uh, I guess, individually score. And also I do wanna show this as well. So this, you get these rewards all for all Alliance members, right? Even if you are not someone who participated, as long as your Alliance won, you get these. As long as your Alliance lost, you get these. So in general, you still get pretty decent rewards just for existing, you know, even if you are not one of the participants. Next, we will talk about these rewards. So these are individual rewards, meaning that if you as an individual score up to 15,000 points, and these points can be scored by one, gathering little nodes around the map, farming zombies that are in little designated zones which i will show you guys shortly or you're like holding i guess you know buildings for example even if you're not defending them like a, like taking a siege on you are still earning points passively from those buildings because they are building up over a period of time and last off if you're just fighting in general be it in those buildings or on the field you are going to be earning points from the troops that you kill like slash injure you know because you're not actually killing stuff um, also, I do not recommend healing in Pompeii. I just want to mention that real quick because a lot of people do heal in Pompeii sometimes. And I said this a lot, but you know, you are at no expense here and you are going to be wasting your speed ups for just, I mean, these are pretty decent rewards, but honestly, I would not waste my speed ups in this event unless it's something like this. Let's say you're super close, you're almost about to win or you're almost about to lose and you really need to heal, right? That is the only case I find it really acceptable so in general i do not recommend healing very regularly unless it's a very situational to you winning or losing and i want those healings to be minimal i want you guys to save yourselves the pain but let's say you get 15k points and then your alliance wins you you know 15k plus points you could get these as a winner's reward or these as a loser's reward same goes with all these other rewards you can get them depending on how you perform as well as if your alliance wins or loses but in general for an hour-long event that you don't actually have to you know like win or anything and just in general it's, it's a pretty good there's a pretty good rewards and now we will hop over to another screen so i want to show you guys this so let's do this okay we're going to be looking at this little map here and I'm going to be giving my best explanation possible. So this is where you guys will spawn at, you know, each team will have one side they spawn in. This will be the red team. This will be the blue team. You could spawn on either side of the map. It's really just random. Um, I think it might actually be my base. I'm not 100% sure if that's true, but basically what's going to happen is you're going to have these operation bases around the map, map and the outpost as well, earning a certain amount of points per minute that you have it captured. And of course, these will be earned, um, you know, I, th I think it takes like a certain amount of time for you to actually capture them. So even if you go and attack it, it will take, let's say, a minute or something, or maybe like two minutes, whatever it might be, to actually have this thing fully captured, and then you start earning these points. So what you're going to want to do is, um, at least this is a general strategy that I think is good for, you know, any alliance, be it new or even some veteran ones i mean i i'd prefer if you're a vet you're going to be more organized in general you know i'm not the most organized but i still have a general understanding of this event so it makes it simple so i would recommend 
you know, having some people split into teams where one, I do want to mention that this is the zombie place I was talking about earlier, and there's also going to be one up here. There's going to be a zombie boss that spawns right here that's good for points, as well as zombies around the area. You want to try to have a team designated for farming these zombies on both sides of the map. And sorry if this thing is covering it, you know, but there will be some zombie things over here as well. Um, uh, there will also be nodes all around the map, and you're going to want to have some people, even if like they are just sacrificing a march, for example, you might have like a few people who are still fighting, but they are sacrificing, let's say, one or two marches, and they are going around gathering these nodes, which are good points for the alliance, as well as the individual farming them. So do note that. I also want to mention that the zombies actually give buffs when you kill them. From what I last remember, if you are killing these zombies, you get buffs, like, put onto your account as well as your alliance members accounts i'm pretty sure that's what i remember um don't don't take my word for that but <laughs> that's what i believe um and and in general you guys are going to want to actually you know just have teams that are coming out here doing those things and then you're going to want to have some people who are maybe running let's say tier one troops because if you guys don't know tier one troops are the slow or sorry the fastest troops if you can have like a tier one rider be it just like one troop and you're bouncing between these taking these as fast as possible and just reducing the time you know that it's going to take to take them any second counts so if you're able to get a second on your enemy and have these just that much sooner than them you're going to be having those points already coming in sooner and maybe if you're fast enough you could always try to snatch this away though this is pretty hard to actually beat your enemy to it but it always is it is always possible and that's basically like the, the whole the whole get around but you are also um i also do want to mention helipad so helipad is very important and this is something that you guys are going to want to make sure you have someone who is very mindful on those and taking those as soon as possible and i've seen a strategy and this is actually a pretty good strategy where your enemy will come right off the bat and right when you spawn in you're going to have your you know a strong player who's able to launch a rally against your enemy's helipad because this helipad is so vital if this you know if the red team takes their helipad and you're not able to capture it in so and so much amount of time um, and, and they capture it in so much in so and so much amount of time they will be able to just start teleporting up here and this will make it so much harder to defend from them one you're gonna have to fight for your helipad back because either either you know you one want to have sl like faster marches kind of over here you want to you know kind of reach earlier you want to just be able to make sure that your marches are coming out faster two you're gonna have your enemy right in your back lines making it really easy for them to hold you down or force you to hold them down just in general them getting your helipad can be really vital and just kill you also i do want to mention that first capture gives you five teleports each and they progressively build throughout the round so each of these uh helipads right on both sides are going to give you five um teleports each and you're going to have 30 players so i do recommend actually having some players who you designate to teleport right off the bat so you aren't having like let's say a 10 million player teleporting up here and then you have a hundred million dude just stuck in zone because he can't teleport that is something that would really screw you over and could screw you over because you know you want your strong players able to pop in here do their work as soon as possible so maybe try to organize in that as well but you will have 10 teleports if these capture right away right same with your enemy so do try to have your stronger players porting up and trying to put up as much uh just presence as you can Next, I want to talk about garrison captains. I noticed this a lot, and I've talked about this in a lot of my videos, but garrison captains are so key to making sure that you are making or breaking this, and, you know, people never understand that garrison captains are so key. You should also, while I'm talking about this, not focus so much on the field. If your enemy is coming down here, all up on the field, fighting over your operations base, and you're pushing up over here, you don't want to be going around fighting these guys right here. And then you just end up losing your operations base. If you guys didn't notice, this is 160 million points compared to this 20 million. Even if you're able to get all three of these, this is 60 points per minute. You're getting 160 from both of these operation bases per minute. You really need to hold these down, if any of them. And you want to make sure your strongest players are garrison captains. And if you guys don't know how to do garrison captains and stuff... I can maybe link it in the comment section, but basically you need a rank 4 or rank 5 member who's able to kind of move around the garrison captains. If you are able to put your stronger players as rank 4 members momentarily for Pompeii while they're in here, that would be good so they wouldn't have to ask in chat for you to constantly move them you know, as garrison captain because their technology is going to apply to all those troops under them and you just really want them to be holding this thing as for as long as possible. 
And like I was saying, do not pay attention to the field as much. I think that paying attention to the field is vital and it really depends on how well you are able to main, like maintain field dominance as well as holding this operations base. If you aren't able to put up enough pressure on this, you know, on holding your operations base or keeping it full, don't be putting, let's say, 2 million troops in the field when you only have like 500k troops in your operations base and you're about to lose it. Because the second you lose this thing, the second they're able to get troops in it, you're the one attacking it. You're the one wasting valuable time of that hour where you need to be earning these points and you're spending all that time trying to push them out of your operations base and then boom you screwed yourself because you're you know you just didn't want to hold it and you wanted to focus on getting points on the field it's such a common mistake if you're able to push your way up here steal their operations base have your members flooding into that thing holding it with everything in their life this can of course be very difficult if you're fighting let's say a whale alliance and you know just the difference is too big let's say you're fighting these guys and they have a hundred million player you're over here and your top dude is 50 million well you're low-key screwed but you can still try your best to try to keep these things full force them to really struggle and kind of spread their like captains as much as possible spread their spread their strongest guys into captaining these things the most you can do is try to keep up the pressure and really do your best in this situation because like I said, the garrison captain's tech is going to be applying. So if they're launching rallies from that 100 mil guy and you're holding with your 50 million guy and his technology, you're going to be trading really poorly. And that doesn't mean that it's over. If you are somehow able to manage field control, somehow able to keep getting the operations base, make it impossible for them to take it, this is still a possible battle. It is just going to be rough. And, you know, you really got to strategize with this type of stuff. And I do hope that this is somehow helping because I know I am blabbering my butt off, but... Yeah, I, I do notice that's a common issue where people overfocus the field or they aren't focusing enough on keeping these things full. Just really note that. You really need to make sure that you're kind of filling these things. You know, you're holding your helipad the best of your ability. And make sure you're trying to con constantly launch rallies because you want to put pressure on them. You want to make sure that they're constantly just putting pressure on your rallies or trying to keep these things full so you're keeping their marches busy while you're able to hopefully push up here and just keep them kind of occupied also i never mentioned bio building bio building spawns a vial every i think 15 minutes you could fact check me on this in the comments i think it's every 15 minutes though and what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to come up here and you're going to want to take this vial and whichever alliance gets it is going to need to instantly skedaddle to one of their operation bases and then hop into it if you're able to hop in your operations base your alliance as well as you will get those points boom popped in there and that just gives you an instant advantage so make sure you are hopefully able to maintain field presence around this bio building during that period you know maybe five minutes before it pops out just make sure that you're able to just note that you know um i'm trying to think if i missed anything you know i talked about the nodes around the map i talked about the zombies the zombies bosses the buffs they give that you just need to be very mindful i talked about common strategies you know be it insta rallying for helipad be it just how not to over focus on the field I mean, I think that this video was somewhat all right. I do hope that this video was helpful. I can't really think of many other tips and I might just be slipping off my mind. But yeah, I do appreciate you guys as always though. And actually, wait, one more thing. I totally forgot. There's the train station right here. So um, this honestly, I never hop into it, but it's honestly good because what'll happen is this train station, I think will launch every maybe a minute or two I'm not really 100% sure I don't pay a ton of attention to it but basically this train station will run about right around here ish and it'll drop off your marches along the way what you want to do is you maybe want to hop in this train station as soon as possible I think there's a capacity on how many troops it can get but you want to try to get your troops up here and basically it'll just it'll just make your life a little bit easier but yeah that is it to the video I do appreciate you guys as always for watching though and it has been a pleasure and I hope you